My name is Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage. I uh, have a buddy on here, buddy of mine. I'm calling you my buddy, Doug. Uh, Doug Swan with Sarma. How you doing, Doug? I'm doing great, thanks. And I like the buddy term, so it's all right by me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you coming on. So I thought it'd be cool for you to come on. And I really wanted to um, discuss forbearance. And that's been a biggie for a lot of people um, in our, ooh, hold on, see now, this is what I was waiting for, there we go. Um, that's been a biggie for a lot of people in our industry right now. A lot of people that are, um, one, wondering customer wise, hey, I own my home, what's the deal with mortgage forbearance? And then also the other one is um, with credit reports. I thought that would be kind of interesting. That's why I kind of, I, I brought you on so, um, before we get started, Doug, can you tell them uh, what you do out there, man? Yeah, man. Uh, appreciate it. I am. I'm Doug Swan. I'm with Sarma. Kind of a crazy name. San Antonio Retail Merchants Association, where it came up. To, <laughs> they, they bought us. Easy for you to back, say. But uh, I usually give out a five dollar gift certificate if anybody knows that. But uh, anyway. Um, so I've been in the game for uh, 29 years, and um, Sarma bought us when we were in Florida, Network Credit. You may remember that name. I don't know if you do. Yeah, yeah, but, I do. I remember uh, that. that. So so been with them about 16 years. They've been in the business for over 110 years now, so we're not going anywhere. So uh, Van Dyke has uh, been uh, is my favorite and best client. So I'm always happy to help out any way I can with them. Been with them with Laura Lynn. I don't know how long it's been now, 10, probably over 10 years or something. So um, anyway, that's how I kind of got involved with Van Dyke, but i uh, been doing it a long time and been some crazy, a couple of crazy times. You probably remember 2006, 07, 08, and all the uh, repos and all that, that uh, went down to him. And uh, this is kind of like the next wave that came through with the forbearance with this uh, coronavirus. So, um, you know, we've had some great times, but so on this time, like you're talking about, uh, the forbearance is when, uh, you know, what is it up to now? 17 million or 20 million unemployed now or something like that. Yeah, I, I, saw the number it's yeah, I thought it was 20, yeah, 20, 20 plus. I mean, it's getting crazy out there. So a lot of these people just don't have the ability to pay their, uh, to pay their loans right now, especially their mortgage. So, um, uh, Government has come out with the Fair Fair uh, the Fair Credit Act there uh, uh, back in March, and so now um, they have to. Each one has to contact their lender. It's just not for everybody. So mm -hmm. what what has to happen is each person needs to contact their lender, and they basically have to do it. I mean, they tell you that you should have a reason that you need it for forbearance reasons, you know, loss of job or something, but. I don't think they're really checking up 100% on that. I think they're saying, okay, <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to get in trouble over that. But um, so if you get with your lender, uh, they can be, I've heard up to 180 days, uh, Tim. You may have heard maybe even longer, up to a year. I don't know what you're hearing out there. Yeah, um, well, we, um, you know, we've been, I heard it was 180 days. Um, you just call in and say you're having hardship and, that's the reason um, that, that is given and that's what they got to take. You don't have to like back in the day, 08, 09, 2010, the short sales, you had to show like pay subs, W2s, uh, you know, banks, yeah. you had to prove you were going broke yeah. right now. I, yeah, I'm, I've heard you, what you're hearing. It, it's not taking a whole lot of that to get approved for these forbearances. So, yeah, um, but you do, each individual person does have to contact their uh, lender. And I think you've, I've heard a lot of your podcasts and, I know you've mentioned it over that it's mainly the government loans that you're talking about on uh, these forbearance issues and things. So um, you may want to talk about that for a second, Tom, just to yeah. let them know. Yeah, yeah, sure. So like, yeah, if anyone's out there watching, by the way, and you have questions or concerns for myself or Doug, just drop them in the comments and, and we'll try to get to them. Um, but the for the forbearance, you know, you have to, uh, one, call your lender directly, find out, you know, tell them, hey, I got a financial hardship. Uh, I want to apply for forbearance. But the thing people have to realize out there is that there's a big difference, a big difference between forbearance and deferment. And so 
deferment for anyone watching, that's where your payment is going to go to the end of the loan. So you just, instead of, you know, going 30 years, you're going to go 30 years and, you know, one month or two months or three months, however long that payment gets deferred for. Forbearance is different. Okay. Forbearance is going to be, Hey, I need, we're going to say six months, you're going to get six months off from making payments. Well, that interest and everything's still collecting the entire time. And so at the end of six months, your lender is going to come to you. And this is all pre-negotiated in the beginning. They're going to come and say, okay, Doug, uh, you paid a thousand dollars a month. It's month six. You owe us six months plus the extra month. Right. And so now you owe them $6,000. Um, and what we've been instructed is, or what I've heard is that all lenders are going to say, okay, well, you have these three payment options. One is they're going to collect it all at the end of the deferment or the uh, forbearance period of six months, or they're going to spread it out over a certain amount of time. It's still going to increase your monthly payment, but they're going to spread it out or they're going to add it to the end and just make it be due at the end of, uh, towards closing or not the closing, uh, the end of your term. Gotcha. Yeah. That's what I've been hearing too. And I, yeah. I would think it'd be more toward the end. Like you said, they may spread it over at the end. I, I don't see where if you're out of a job for even a few months, how are you going to come up with six months of mortgage, uh, you know, after six months. So I'm sure, but each lender, that, that's what they'll contact each lender and, and go over that with them. But on the credit side itself is uh, on the, on the fair act is, um, the lenders cannot um, report you as late at all. And as long as that forbearance have you gotten with them on the forbearance. So not one through 180 days, whatever, they not can't come back in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days late. They cannot uh, report you as being late whatsoever. So it's not going to hurt your credit uh, score at all. So that's, that's a little good news out of the whole thing. Um, Again, like you said, they, they need to get with each lender, but as long as they do the term that the lenders ask and, and, uh, and they do get in on the forbearance issues and are the side of the forbearance, then they cannot uh, show you as late. Now, I've talked to a few of the bureaus and they said, you know, just if, if they, you want to talk to your borrowers out there is, um, is uh, they may want to check on their report, maybe get a credit harm or something once, you know, a month or, you know, once every couple months during this forbearance time, just to see that they're not getting shown as being late. Um, the government's told these uh, uh, for them uh, uh, when they go and, you know, they input their information, uh, information to the bureaus once a month that they can't put it on there. But with all this coming on so fast, Tim, it, it could be something could, you know, be missed or something like that. So you'd want to make sure on your own report that it's not showing up. So it may be something you want to look at. Yeah. So um, a couple things to those points. One is if you're watching this and you are thinking about forbearance and you can make your mortgage payment, just make your mortgage payment. You know, don't get stuck six months down the road. I mean, what are we in? You know, April, man, you're going to... Yeah roll into the holidays oh and six months of mortgage payments plus holidays good lord and to say um, that i've had buddies come up to me asking me hey doug should i do this i can get six months off you know they're just seeing it's free money almost yeah. not having to pay without really realizing what it's about so yeah i really hope these lenders man when they talk to these borrowers they tell them you know if you agree to this six month one where you got to pay it back in six months that you know you're paying the lump sum dude and there's no way around it. you know here's the amount it's going to be by the way and i i doubt that's going to happen as much as we would probably hope that's you a know? big number right yeah yeah but um i wanted to kind of just go a little deeper on a few things so when you're applying for a mortgage to buy a home which by the way if you're thinking about buying a home you're currently renting i highly suggest you do it um let us help you at this time to prepare you to buy a home in the future. That was a little side jab there. I had to throw that in there for you guys if you're watching. But one of the things we look at, and Doug, you know this, is, hey, what's your credit score? And then one of the first things we look at is if you have an existing mortgage, how is that paid back? You know, if you pay back your current mortgage, you know, late every other month or whatever, yeah. what lender is going to want to jump in and lend to you? Yeah. And so when this forbearance thing came up, I was like, uh, that's one of the big concerns was, man, how are they going to report this? 
you know, if someone goes six months down, is that going to show us, you know, six 30 day lates or, you know, what will it look like? But it sounds like, and I kind of want to make this a definitive point that as of right now, the mortgage lenders, if you go into forbearance, they're not going to report you as late, correct? That is correct. They are not allowed to show you as late. So, you know, how long you go into your forbearance, I, I've heard, you know, you're going three months, six months, how long it can be. As long as you're with that and got with that lender, they were told uh, by the government that they cannot, uh, you know, uh, uh, show you as late at all in any of those months. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, one late can really ding your score. And it can, Absolutely. Uh, especially if you have a great score and then, um, you know, one mortgage late could lose, I've seen over a hundred points. So, I mean, you're, you're now you're talking about a lot uh, higher rate and different things as you know, Tim. So this is important to make sure that, you know, it's a good thing that you cannot be late. Like you said, if, you know, just stressing it, if you can pay it, pay it, but if you can't, it may be ways to go and on the credit side of it, you won't be hurt. So, yeah. And, and also advice to them would be have an open line of communication with your lender. You know, don't just not pay it and think they're going to know, Yeah. you know, that, hey, oh, it's, uh, you know, coronavirus and uh, I don't have to pay my bills now and everyone's going to know it. It ain't going to go down like that. They're going to mark you as late. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, yeah. how much does a, when you have a mortgage, so you mentioned a hundred point drop you've seen before. So like, is that how much a late pay on, how much on average do you think a late pay on a mortgage? Well, again, it's hard to really say because every person's credit's different. It, it depends on how much credit you have, how many late you've had in the past, if you've had collections, different things. So, you know, the, the worse your credit is, the less it's going to get ding because if you're already in the 500s or low 600s, you can't go down as much. But I'm telling you, I've seen people with perfect credit and some people, their credits like gold. They do not want to be late with anything. Mm -hmm. um, I know you like those kind of borrowers, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I've seen them where uh, one recent late, uh, it can it can knock them down 100 points. So, I mean, you could put it a totally different uh, interest rate where over 30 years or something, that could really hurt. So, um, this well, is big very time. important. Yeah, well, well, you look at like, um, you know, just conventional loans right now, and or FHA use FHA for an example. You go, um, you do an FHA loan, and your score is below a 640, which we can still do, by the way. Another Tim Hart Van Dyke mortgage plug. <laughs> um, but you know it's costly, right? Like they're gonna yeah. they're gonna pay discount points for that credit score. That's right. You get above 640, you're gonna get a little bit better rates, etc. Right. Right. But when you have a conventional mortgage and you have you know, a 660 compared to a 700 or something, you know, it could be a quarter point difference just in rate, you yeah. know, just for that. And then you get up to a 740, you're going to get even better and better. So, and credit score needs to be protected and kept in check by all means. And necessary. people sometimes think, ah, a quarter of a point, but I, I mean, you could probably bring up a bunch of stats if you're doing it over 15 or 30 years or something like that. Absolutely. I mean, that adds up. So, yeah, um, it can hurt them. Another thing, another thing we do have for Tim, Don, he knows, and it's just a plug for, I like to say it's for Van Dyke, is uh, we're here to help uh, Tim. So anyone out there listening to Tim now and you have score, maybe score issues, he has all the tools available to help you uh, show you how to increase your scores to get those rates higher. So uh, we have those things for uh, Tim and Van Dyke, and they use them all the time. So don't think you're stuck at a score. He can get you to a higher score. So that's just a, just a plug for him. So. Absolutely. And you know how many times, Doug, we have people that say, hey, I want to apply, but my credit sucks. You know, like they, yeah. they don't think they can get approved. And sometimes we can take them and prove them on the spot. But others, it's like, hey, you're right. It kind of does suck right now, but do X, Y, and Z and we'll get you there, you know? Right. Sure. And, and with your tools, Doug, we can get them there using them. Well, and uh, they, they may not know, but just, uh, you know, a lot of them probably have come to you in the past Tim, and say, Hey, I got a credit karma. Wait a minute. I got a 740 with credit karma. Oh, and you just pulled my report and it's a 650. Yeah. I only get about five of those calls a week, but, um, uh, see what I did to their report, but um, that, that's something. That's why they need to come to you and get their uh, reports pulled by you, because the mortgage will only use the models for the mortgage scores with all three bureaus, 
and you are the only one that has that. They can't get that outside with the free credit reports. They're looking at consumer reports, which is totally different. So they need to come to you and you need to pull the report to let them know where they stand. Yeah. And, and it's funny you bring that up too. That's one thing we do battle a lot. And, you know, it's the same thing. I learned my lesson with car loans, you know, the car credit reports different than what we use in the mortgage right. industry. I didn't even know that. Yeah. So, yeah. Four or five years ago. Another thing is they're, they're a little bit worried. Sometimes they may tell you, Hey Tim, I don't want you to pull my report because in the last two weeks I've gone to ABC mortgage, Chase bank, as long as they're pulling up for mortgage purposes, basically within 30 day span, it doesn't matter how many times they get it pulled for mortgage purposes. It only counts as one inquiry. So it does not hurt their score. Okay. We're so, going to so. say this again. I want to make sure I'm as clear as day on this question. <laughs> okay. When someone is applying for a mortgage, how many times can they have their credit pulled before it lowers their score? Each bureau is a few different days, but on average it's 30 days. And the people that are pulling the credit reports for mortgages, they know it's for mortgage purposes because they get a certain code from the credit bureaus. So no matter if it's banks or lenders or brokers, they know it's for a mortgage industry. So all three bureaus under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, as long as it's pulled within that period, basically 30 days, that only counts as one inquiry. They want you to be able to go out and shop for a mortgage. They don't want that to hurt you for shopping for a mortgage. They should stop right when they come to your office, I'm sure, but just in case, <laughs> just in case. I was uh, gonna say, yeah, until I pull your credit, then you can't shop it anymore, that's right. sorry. That's right, that is stopped right there. But uh, it's important because a lot of people don't want you to, and again, they go out and get credit card. They're, they're, it's good to see like a credit karma if before they come to you, yeah. if they haven't yet, because it has all their information on it. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's called score models and scorecards. They put emphasis on what they look at. So each one is different. So mortgages is different than a consumer report that they're seeing. So I just wanted to kind of throw that in for you on that to kind of let them know. Yeah. So if you're having your, if you're shopping for a mortgage, you can pull your credit for at least 30 days with several mortgage companies and your score will only look like you had the one inquiry. That's correct? it. That's it. You will see the inquiries, but only counts right. as one inquiry. So yes. And, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 So, well, we don't have, um, didn't have <clears throat> too many questions on that, but I know uh, we'll get this information out to our database. So they have it as well. Okay. And, um, I do appreciate you coming on. I always appreciate you being a resource for us. Sure. Um, and, and the tools that we have, because a lot of people get scared by credit and they, sh and they don't, some of them don't take it as serious. And, you know, I, I would highly advise everyone out there, if you're watching this one, let's recap this real quick. Um, if you're thinking about doing forbearance, have a conversation with your lender, see what the options are. Um, if you can pay your mortgage, pay it. Don't get stuck in this forbearance thing, pay your mortgage. And then thirdly is if you do go into forbearance, the credit bureaus will not be notified by the lenders for any kind of late pays. That's right. Yeah. And uh, maybe just have them take a look at it during the six months or whatever they're in forbearance to make sure that they didn't slip through the cracks, but that is the, uh, through the fair act. So they should be fine. And keep an open line of communication with your creditors as well. That's right. And use Tim for all your mortgage needs. <laughs> I need to do videos with you more often, man. You plug me more than I plug we myself. We could either talk like that or we could talk about the tiger thing. We've been watching all the time. Uh, right? Tiger King. Yeah, man. <laughs> Joe Exotic. Because Joe Exotic 2020. All right, Doug. Dude, I appreciate you, man. Thank sure. you. We'll do another one of these and go deeper on um, maybe some credit myths or something. Yeah, whatever you want me. So uh, just let me know and have a great weekend. All right. Uh, do you want anyone to get in touch with you? Or yeah, anybody wants to call me that may have a question, I'm uh, anyone can call my cell phone. Always available. 813-299-2611. Email is D Swan S W A N at Sarma S A R M A dot com. 
What a guy, man. So you just take calls from random people? Well, just try to help them out. I will direct them your way if they call me. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. All right, brother. Well, I appreciate you, man. Thank you, dude. Take care, bud. See you. See you, Doug. Oh, and boy, by the way, if anyone needs help from me, please contact me. God, I'm pushing Doug's number out and forgot mine. Uh, <laughs> reach out anytime. I'm always here to help. 239-910-5668 nights weekends text me call me here for you if you need to get pre-approved to buy a home you want to refinance your current mortgage or you just have questions in general let me know happy to help thanks for watching and doug again thanks bro appreciate you, you got it, man great weekend see you see you buddy